Start with eight grams of tomato paste and 10 milliliters of acetone. Mix them together and mix the tomato paste with the acetone for three to four minutes. Mix that thoroughly to remove all water and water soluble substances from the paste. After stirring for three or four minutes, decant off the extra liquid. To get the last bit of liquid out, you're going to put the tomato paste into a piece of folded filter paper and squeeze it. of paper towels to absorb more moisture and be careful not to tear the filter paper. Take the dehydrated tomato paste and transfer it into a small beaker. and add 10 milliliters of a one-to-one -one mixture of pet ether and dichloromethane. Chop up the chunks of tomato paste and stir again for three to four minutes. After stirring thoroughly, add a small scoop of anhydrous magnesium sulfate to remove any final traces of water. Stir that in a little bit more. Next, we're going to filter this solution into a clean small beaker. I'm going to wet the filter paper with a little bit of the solvent. I'm just squeezing the tomato paste a little bit to get any extra liquid to come out and go through the filter paper. I'm going to put it into the hood so that that solvent evaporates and when it's completely dry, we'll reconstitute it. While our sample is evaporating in the hood, we're going to prepare our column. First, we'll take a piece of glass wool and make a small plug to put in the bottom of a dry burette. Next, we're going to add 15 milliliters of low boiling petroleum ether to the column. Next, we'll add about a centimeter of sand. And then I'm going to add the petroleum ether to the alumina basic and get it suspended as a slurry. You can also tap the column with a rubber stopper to make sure that the alumina is distributing even. Once your alumina settles, add one more centimeter of sand to the top of the column and let the solvent drain until it is just about even with the top of the sand. Once your column is ready, you can get your very dry sample out of the fume hood and we're going to reconstitute that with just a little bit of the same solvent that we used before, the petroleum ether and dichloromethane. We're only going to use about one or two milliliters to do that. 
Next, we're going to add our small sample to the top of the column with a different pipette. Once your sample is on the column, drain the solution to the top of the sand. So we're going to rinse our beaker with a little bit of petroleum ether and add that to the column. Also wash the sides and inside top of the column with some petroleum ether and let this drain to the top of the sand. So keep adding solvent, draining it to the top of the sand. So all of the beta carotene that was in the sample has been eluded off the column with petroleum ether. So we're going to switch solvents and we're going to elude the lycopene band from the column using a 9 to 1 mixture of pet ether and acetone. You should be able to see that as the solvent front is moving down the column that the lycopene is starting to come off and come down with the solvent. Let the solvent reach all the way to the sand before you add more, but remember not to let the top of the sand get dry. If you are collecting lycopene for further analysis, you can see that the lycopene band is starting to exit the column, so you can switch to a small sample vial to collect the lycopene itself.